Welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, I'm gonna be unboxing and giving you my first impressions on my new Axman's Delays. Now I'm really excited about this lathe because it's got so many features and so many accessories available so you can basically turn anything you like. This lathe is much bigger than my last because I want to be turning much bigger pieces like platters and large vessels. So I've just taken off these straps and the lid should just come off like this. So it looks really well packaged. Obviously you've got this cardboard wall but on the inside you've got these wooden frames to stop the lathe being damaged. So these frames look like they're just stapled in place, so I should just be able to pull them out with a bit of persuasion. And you've got this box at the bottom here. Okay, so in this box, this spanner, that's for taking the faceplate off, some bolts. This handle that I think is for tensioning the belt. This is one of those double end tapers that helps you center the tailstock and the headstock. You've got this bar that you put through the headstock and it helps you knock out the spur center. And you've got this locking key that locks a headstock so it's easy to remove the chuck. And you also have the instruction manuals. So obviously this lathe is ridiculously heavy so I won't be able to lift it out. I've got the leg stand over here. So I'm gonna unbox the leg stand and remove the packaging around the lathe so then I can get some help lift it up while it's on the pallet and put the legs on instead of trying to lift the lathe out of the box like this. So there's a little nut on the end that you had to remove. That's a safety nut and that's to stop the tailstock from sliding too far and falling off the lathe. But it's quick to remove it and I can take it off. So the headstock is permanently attached to the lathe bed because it's wide in place. But what I'm going to do is remove it and just rest it on the floor so then it's a bit lighter to lift up onto the legs. And to do that you need to remove this safety piece that stops the headstock from falling off the bed. And that's just bolted on place. Alright, so this is a big box. This is where the leg stand is. These are cast iron legs. So they're gonna absorb a lot of the vibration and really weigh the lathe down as well. All right, let's see how heavy it is. Okay, and that is heavy, but I think I can manage. And over here you've got a bag with the rubber feet and some nuts and bolts to attach it onto the lathe. And you've got the second leg. Okay, before I attach the legs onto the lathe, I'm gonna add the rubber feet onto the bottom of the legs. It's gonna be a lot easier doing that now than when the bed is mounted onto the legs. And these just screw on. There is a thread drilled into the cast iron and these rubber feet just screw on. The good thing about these legs is you've got this cut out so it's easy to access the bolts and like bolt them in. Three, two, one. Oh. Okay. Pull it. So one of the accessories you can get with the lathe are the mobility wheels. Now this is really important to me. I move my machines around the workshop all the time, especially when I need uh, more outfeed and infeed on the table saw or the plate of thicknesser. And if a lathe or a machine didn't have that capability of being put on a mobile wheelbase or have wheels fitted to it, I probably wouldn't get it. So I'm very glad this lathe has the option of getting mobility wheels. Now it's actually listed on Axminster's website as workbench casters because they're designed to be screwed into the leg of a workbench so you can move your workbench around. But Axminster have actually put matching holes on the cast iron leg so you can use workbench casters on this lathe. So this is the box it comes in and you get four of them and they're all swivel heads so you can just move the lathe 360 degrees. So you've got the instructions here and you've got the four casters here that are already pre-assembled so no work for us. 
And I've got two bolts here that I'll just secure on with an Allen key. So you've got this handle here that screws onto this motor bracket and that helps you to move the motor backwards and forwards to tension the belt. This is the switch box that's in a plastic bag. So the next thing to put on is the banjo. And already that moves so well. And the tail stop. Another accessory I really recommend getting is a lathe extension bed because it will enable you to turn much longer components but also much wider components because you can install this lathe extension bed lower down on the cast iron leg so you can turn large platters. I will show that more clearly later. And when you buy the extension bed it also comes with a banjo extension arm so it will reach the higher points when you're turning large platters. So you've got some instructions on how to install it. This was the extension arm I was telling her about. You got a pin here and some bolts and washers and the extension bed itself that is covered in grease. So I will need to remove that. So the extension bed gets mounted on with four bolts. So it's pretty heavy. It looks like there's a little notch I can rest it on. And the holes in the extension bed are a bit bigger than the bolt, so you have some adjustment to get it exactly dead on. So that is the lathe set up. I love it, I think it looks awesome. It's a lot beefier and bigger than my last lathe. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you all the features it has so you can work out if it is the lathe for you. So the max diameter you can turn above the lathe bed is 406 millimeters, but the headstock does turn so you can turn much larger platters outside the lathe bed or move the headstock to the end and drop the extension bed down onto the cast iron leg and then you can turn larger bowls out there as well. The distance between the centers excluding the extension bed is 710 millimeters and the extension bed adds another about 300 millimeters so you can turn meter long components on this lathe. This lathe is extremely well built. All the parts are metal and cast iron and that is great because it's gonna absorb all the vibrations. And like I said, the cast iron legs are only gonna add more weight to it. But that does mean you don't have to get the cast iron legs. You can mount the lathe on top of a workbench if you prefer that. Now, even though the legs are really beefy and heavy, they don't take up a lot of space in the workshop. My last lathe, the legs really splayed out and actually had a larger footprint uh, than this lathe does. The headstock has this cutout here. So if you're turning, this headstock won't get in the way because your arm has a place for it to go. A lot of lathes this size, the headstock is a big square section with a right angle. So, you know, you can't really put your arm in that location, but with this cutout, you can rest your arm there and turn. And while we're on the headstock, you've got this screen here, so you can see which belt you're using and to see if it's running correctly. And this lathe is variable speed, which I would say is a must nowadays if you were to buy a new lathe. There are two speed ranges depending on which side you put the belt on. The high speed range goes from 150 to 3750 rotations per minute and the low range goes from 50 to 1,250 rotations per minute. The lower range is gonna give you more torque when you're turning large components, but most of the time I'm gonna stay up in that high range. And that range from 150 to 3,750 is such a big range, you're rarely gonna uh, need to go out of that. While we're on the switch box, it is magnetic, so you can position it wherever you like on the lathe bed. So depending on where you're turning on a large component, the emergency stop is always right next to you. You've got an on and off button, you've got the speed control, and you've got a forward and reverse switch. A cool feature the lathe has is an indexing feature. There are markings here so you can keep track where you are, and you just need to turn this knob in to lock the spindle in place. Now the headstock is a hollow headstock, which is a really good feature if you like turning finials or 
let's say chess pieces or small parts like that. So what you can do is put a large dowel through, secure it in place with a collet chuck, turn your end, part it off, and then feed a bit more through and do the same again. So you don't need to constantly be remounting blanks onto your lathe. You can just run a dowel through and have constant material being fed through. I really like that. I'm not a production turner. If you wanna turn lots of finials or draw knobs, that will be a really important feature for you. Now this lathe has an extremely powerful motor. It is a two horsepower three phase motor. But don't worry, don't run away just yet. You don't need a three phase supply to run this lathe. There is a converter already installed in the lathe bed. So actually it only runs on a standard three pin plug, 240 volt plug, and that converter transforms that into three phase and gives you all that extra power. But you may think because the motor is extremely powerful, it's gonna be very loud. But actually this lathe runs smoothly, very quiet. Your extractor will be louder than the lathe, so you don't need to worry about that. The headstock moves up and down the lathe bed. You just release this lever and you can slide it. And to turn the headstock, you've got this pin here that you pull out and you can just turn it like that. You can see how easy it is to turn and there's positive stops at all the important locations. The bed is finished beautifully and it is ground completely flat, which means the banjo and the tail stock and the headstock slide up and down smoothly and uh, effortlessly. The bed has lots of welts in it, which will prevent twisting and warping. The banjo is made from metal and cast iron. I've always said I love metal handles on machines. I think it's a sign of good quality. Also means it's gonna lock all the components down tightly and they're never gonna break and it's gonna last a long time. This tool rest locking lever can be mounted in three different locations. So it will never get in the way of this larger banjo locking handle. The tail stock is huge, which is very important for a lathe this size. This hand on the back is so smooth and just so enjoyable to turn. There is a scale on the tail stock in metric and imperial. So when you're drilling into a blank, you'll know exactly how deep you're going. And there is a self ejection pin at the back when you wanna remove the center. You just need to wind it all the way to the end and it will just pop out like this. And then you can just put it back in place and it will stay there. The cast iron legs have these brackets in the molding so you can cut a piece of plywood and use these as shelf supports. So it's a good idea if you wanna weigh the lathe down more, you can put sandbags on that shelf or it can be turning tool storage. I've already mentioned the mobility wheels, that is really important to me and I like how they mount right into the cast iron leg. Now I've already attached the extension bed onto the lathe and lined it up perfectly. But I'll put a couple of pictures on the screen now so you can see that this extension bed can be dropped down, the headstock can be moved forward and you can turn much larger platters. And I mentioned this tool rest extender just slots into the banjo, raises that tool rest up so you're turning at the center of the tailstock. I love this feature, you don't see it on a lot of lathes and I just can't wait to turn large platters. So there are all the features on my new lathe. I can't wait to start using it. I think the first thing I'm gonna make is a router sled jig so I can batch out table and chair legs. Stay tuned with the channel because in an upcoming video, I'm gonna be showing you a lot of accessories you can get with this lathe from lathe tools, sharpening systems, chucks and jigs. It's gonna be a really good video. If you're interested in buying this lathe or anything else on Axmas's website, I'd be really grateful if you use my affiliate link in the description down below. That just takes you to Axminster's website and it lets them know that I sent you and they'll get a small cut of your purchase with no extra cost to you. It's a great way of supporting the channel for free and I'm really grateful and appreciative for all the people that have already used that link. That link will always be in the description of all my videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for sticking to the end and I'll see you very soon for the next one.